Hello and welcome back to NFL DFS Slate Breakdown for Week 2 Thursday Night Football. We have the Bills versus the Dolphins, and I think it's going to be an interest, interesting game. We already have Raheem Mostert out, so we do talk. got to talk about some injuries. And uh, if so, then type situations because Devon A. Chan is also uh, a game time decision. Technically, he is questionable right now, but uh, the word on the street is he will be a game time decision. So we will dig it all into all of that. But before we do, come join us at LineStar. $39.99 a month gets you access to everything we do, all the props, all the DFS for all the sports we cover. It's a great time to come join us right now. We have football starting now. Basketball starts in a month. It's the best time of the sports year right now. Baseball is coming to the end of the season and we got playoffs we got a lot to go over and let's get into it all right so starting on this uh thursday night slate as always we will go position by position starting with quarterback tua tagovaya tua uh look i like tua as a quarterback at least in this offense his ceiling is real but he hasn't done anything versus uh, Buffalo. Zoomed in here. This is his player log or game log versus uh, Buffalo. The blue dots are his fantasy scores. The purple are his projections. So he has routinely come in at or below the projection. He has one game of at least two touchdowns versus Buffalo in the last two years. And... Actually, sorry, that's one game with uh, at least two touchdowns ever versus them. And that is in seven attempts. So I'm a little worried to want to go with uh, Tua. I think uh, he definitely lacks some upside in this uh, spot. So I'm definitely hesitant to go there. He is at least at home. Does the fact that he hasn't really had a good game versus them mean that you know he can't have one on thursday no not at all but i am less favorable of him i think he has a tough time for buffalo Uh, i'm not that concerned with the weather right now it does look like it's scattered thunderstorms but like that's pretty normal for september in miami I, I think the weather is going to be a fine, just fine, you know, not a major concern here. But I worry about Tua as a passer for Buffalo because he just hasn't been able to get it done against them. So um, with his ownership at 75%, I have a very hard time getting there. The other thing, when you go into the context of a single game here, Josh Allen has way higher upside, way higher floor, and Tua has so few targets that he throws to, you can get most of Tua's points through Waddle or Hill uh, or, you know, Devon Achan if he if he goes off. So I don't feel like it's necessary, necessary to get to Tua. Josh Allen, totally different story. He can just win games on his own. And over the back half of last season, since they changed the offense coordinator and the start of this season, that's exactly what he's done. Two passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns last game, almost 40 yards rushing. We ended the year last year, two rushing touchdowns, 70 yards uh, rushing. He is, he has solid rushing upside. He's giant. He uses his size near the red zone to get those touchdowns. I I think he is a no brainer to try and play the likelihood of him being in the perfect lineup is very, very high. So he's going to be super high owned, but it's with good reason. All right. Now we get into the running back spot. Now this is where we got to talk about a little thing, a couple things. I'm going to go to the snaps for last week. We'll look at Miami here. So Devon H. Han, 52% 52% of snaps. Uh, Raheem Mostert's already out. Jeff Wilson came in and played 15% of the snaps after Mozart got hurt. 
So, say A-Chan's healthy, most likely it is going to be him and Jeff Wilson, and they will probably pretty much just be splitting carries with maybe a little bit more favor to A-Chan. However, he is questionable. He's a game-time decision, which opens the door for Jalen Wright. Now, Jalen Wright is a 4.340 guy coming out of uh, college, has big-time upside, look good in... Uh, preseason I think if a chance out what happens I think Wilson's likely the number one probably 55 maybe 60 percent of the snaps but Wright will be there for like 40 percent and he's the one that will likely have the higher upside uh, just because he has more speed more game breaking ability however Jeff Wilson has put up st- decent games when he has started so i do not want you to forget about him uh the sample size we can show here is pretty small but he's he's a quality or decent running back i don't want to say quality uh because he's third string on the dolphins um but he but he's a solid running back he can get it done so you can't forget about wilson but right is very intriguing and let's uh get back to the running back spot and right would be coming in at 2000 jeff wilson at 2400 wilson will have the higher projection by far with that probably the higher ownership but right is very very interesting there is a chance that touts can be all over right over the next couple days if anything happens with the, uh devon a chan but I think uh, Wright definitely has the upside, but Jeff Wilson consistency at 2,400, he has plenty of upside to get it done. Then you go to the Buffalo side, and it's really the James Cook show. He played a ton, had 22 touches, and I would pretty much expect that to happen again. Ty, Ty Johnson, two carries, one target. He wasn't factored in much. And then Ray Davis, three carries, one reception. So I think it's pretty much just back to the Jared Cook show. Wouldn't really sprinkle in Ray Davis much. However, at least his ownership would be extremely low with Jalen Wright, Jeff Wilson type of uh, value there. So that was the only reason I would go to Ray Davis is maybe he gets a late game touchdown because it's a blowout for Buffalo type situation all right uh ownership wise it's pretty straightforward how it should be i mean james cook is the most likely to score the most fantasy points his ownership being the highest isn't that surprise surprising uh hn definitely has a little bit of a wider um variance in his score he has the upside but he also has a downside where He's coming into the game banged up. If he plays, maybe he gets hurt and his floor is super low. But if he plays and stays healthy, maybe he gets extra touches because Mozart's out and he is, you know, playing 65% of the snaps instead of his normal 50-ish. So there's big time upside at the HN, but huge risk as well. And then... Everybody else, you already have my thoughts. So let's move it over to wide receiver. So Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, obviously the top two. They should be for ownership-wise as well. One thing I want to bring your attention to, though, is I think people are sleeping on Keon Coleman a little bit. He played 73% of the snaps. He led the Bills wide receivers for snap count by a decent margin. Mac Hollins was actually second at 58%. And it's interesting because Mac is only 1.6K. But with the value of Wright or Wilson, I don't think salary is really going to be that much of an issue here. So I don't think we need to get a Mac Hollins type play. I think his ownership might be a little bit high. But the guy, I mean, he got a touchdown this first week so that's great but he had two targets and pretty much all in his career he is a low target earner he's going to be out there with Josh Allen so he is worth a look but I don't think I would really waste too much on uh, Hollins 
And I would rather go to Keon Coleman or Cahil Shakir, who are going less owned and I think just have more upside. Shakir had a touchdown also, only three targets. He played similar snaps to Hollins, just not quite as much. I think the big winner really is Keon Coleman. He was a first round rookie, had five targets, 50 yards. He's six foot three, 215 pounds. He is a red zone threat where Josh Allen really does need red zone threats. I mean, Dalton Kincaid last season wasn't able to get many red zone targets. So uh, maybe having this big bodied receiver will allow uh, Allen to throw a few more touchdowns in the red zone rather than just taking them himself and himself and run it in. MVS, he'll be out there a little bit and normal if he gets targeted on a deep go route and actually catches it, then he's, you know, optimal. But if he doesn't, he's not going to be useful. Curtis Samuel, there's a big time worries for. He only had two targets. He only played like 17 snaps. Uh, I think he only had like nine routes on 30 Josh Allen dropbacks. It, it was something like that. It wasn't. I don't know if that's that for sure. Oh, we have it right here. Nine, nine uh, routes. So uh, Curtis Samuel is a worry. I don't know if it's just because he was injured. He had some turf toe in the preseason and they're just being careful with him or if this is kind of his role. And if it is, you got big time worries with Curtis Samuel. And I don't know if I can justify playing him. However, there's a chance maybe they're just bringing him along slow because of that maybe he gets a few more uh, snaps this game. Can you play him? Yes. I just don't know if it's very likely he's going to hit. Right now, it's pretty hard for me to want to have much Curtis Samuel. Far and away, the, the best spots right now are Tyreek Hill, Waddle, Coleman, Shakir, as far as the uh, wide receivers. And then... You know, you have some uh, pivots you can make from those, but mixing and matching those are really where it's going to get done. And as I said, the interesting thing about these Dolphins wide receivers is Tua has very, very slim target tree. So Hill or Waddle, one of them could go absolutely nuts and then get most of Tua's fantasy points, you know, in theirs as well. So moving it over to tight end, we got Dalton Kincaid, 24% owned. 7,200. He is super expensive. He only had two targets uh, last game, but he did run, you know, almost all of the routes. He was on the field a ton, played like 83%. The one thing here is that Arizona was trying to take him out of the game. They were bracketing him and doubling him a ton. And I don't hold last game against Kincaid too much. They won. Uh, they got it done. They just didn't have to rely on Kincaid. He was used more of his decoy due to how uh, all the coverage was on him. So I think he is absolutely still in play. And if his ownership is low, there is a very, very real chance that he is the first look on this offense. Coleman is still a rookie. Kincaid has at least has a year under his belt. And... If he's the number number one, it looks pretty interesting at 24% owned in 7,200. Uh, Johnny Smith, he played enough. I This team just has never used tight ends that much, and that's my worry here. But at least with Johnny, we know he's fast. He has that athletic ability and the speed that the Dolphins like. So maybe he gets a little bit of work, but the Dolphins the last few years just really haven't used the uh, tight end much. Gasicki was there. He's a solid pass catching tight end and didn't get much. So I don't really expect too much difference for Jono Smith. Now Dawson Knox played around 50% of the snaps. He had a tar two targets. Uh, I fully expect him to be involved, especially in the red zone. And with that, I think he is very much in consideration as one of the uh, low owned punt plays you can make because when it comes down to it, if you're getting a touchdown, you're most likely going to be in the perfect lineup if your salary is only 2600. All right, we got the defenses, got kickers. 
I mean, I don't really love either defense in this spot. However, you always got to consider them just the fact that both of these teams are going to be throwing the ball. And with throwing the ball becomes the chance or comes the chances of possible interceptions, which can lead to pick sixes, sacks, and all that, which score defense fantasy points. So I think you need to consider, can think about it. Um, I'm not going to have a ton of them, but I'm absolutely going to have some of the defense uh, from both sides in this spot. And moving on to kicker, hey, it's the same pretty much every time. I, I think both are absolutely viable uh, to play in this spot. Real quick, checking over on FanDuel just to see any major salary differences here. Uh, two is going way less owned than Josh Allen, as I would expect, and I think that's how it should be on DraftKings. He is 3K more, which is a lot more, but I would still pay it. Running back-wise, ownership is pretty much the exact same, and you still have the same situations. Wide receiver, Tyreek Hill, 65 or 16,500. He is super expensive, but he is their number one if there's any receiver in the game. That's worth it. It is him. The ceiling is absolutely there. And if his ownership is getting depressed because that price is so high, I'm all in for playing him. I think Waddle is the obvious uh, ownership pivot off of him. Well, he's higher owned, but I should say salary pivot. Uh, Kean Coleman at 10K, I think may go a little lo uh, lower owned. I don't think people are really going to want to pay that for a guy that only had five targets. But, hey, he was the wide receiver out there the most. Very interested in him. And then uh, Shakir and Hollins, you got to consider, in my opinion. Tight end, Kincaid, highest owned, Janu, barely owned, and Knox, barely owned. The obvious pivot there. So that'll do it for us today, guys. Good luck. Let's make some money. And... We'll be back uh, Friday for your week one main slate breakdown. Have a good one. Bye.